we got going on here, custom black. Shout out, Let's see what we get. All right, good afternoon, good day, whatever time it is you're watching, folks. So here's what we got. We got a dual battery tray kit for from Rugged Ridge <coughs> uh, for the JK, obviously. Uh, so real basic kit, doesn't have any frills. Uh, keeping it real simple here, uh, ran is inexpensive, relatively. Uh, biggest challenge. Uh, you have is installing it but uh, first thing I did go through you gotta go through get those uh, your fuse box out of there I uh, went through and got that uh, moved out of the way now when I went into it to install the battery tray looking down at it here uh, and the reason I'm doing it in this method instead of showing you how I uh, all my drilling and sawing and cutting and everything else so obviously I've already removed the stock battery tray in, in, in this picture and I didn't do it per the instructions. The instructions have you pull out the entire battery tray, which is attached to the rest of the platform that supports all the way down to your air filter. But because I have an aftermarket snorkel, I kept the fuse box the, the holds it there. Next to that is the um, on over to the air filter I kept all that connected in, in, in there uh, while and I cut away on here on the right side of the battery tray to cut away the piece that would eventually be removed and the instructions what they have you do is take out the whole piece and then cut it I cut it inside the Jeep because again I have an aftermarket um, I have an aftermarket snorkel so it's a fixed to a hard point on that filter making it unable to remove that so what I did cut that out with a Dremel and a cutting tool and um, moved the battery fu the fuse tray the fuse box there over about an eighth of an inch and the instructions have you do that uh, after you put it back in I was able to do it take a couple screws out adjust the move point slide it over that eighth of an inch and this this is a really really snug fit here uh, definitely as tight as you could get it without uh, I don't know if it gets any tighter so it was a tight fit uh, going in my own way here and really once you get this to this point it's really fairly easy uh, so ditch get rid of this thing right here the old battery tray gone after we cut it and again and fixed in here start to reroute the cables get the fuse box back uh, where it belongs get to get the wires aligned really there's a lot of wiring that goes into this so that's the hard part I went with a Weston dual battery kit there are kits out there that combine the tray and the kit all in one piece together um, for significantly more price cost the Weston kit comes with everything you need. You just have to do a little wiring, connecting wires to connectors and shrink tape, heat shrink wrap, things like that. You have to do yourself, cut wires to length and stuff like that. So it takes a little more effort. Whereas some of the kits you can buy, it's basically you connect everything to the battery and your solenoid and it's ready to go. Here you have to, with this Weston kit, it's a little more intensive uh, what you do with the wiring here's a solenoid and some of the connectors the bus bar I had here's the really good wiring it came with extra wire and it wasn't a problem I was definitely not short I had extra left over which was good uh, if you wanted to route this in any other fashion uh, you could definitely do that and the wiring harness that goes to the control or the read module that comes inside the cab of the vehicle and there's the module the read module there uh, that really you put mount it wherever you want I'm putting it on the left side far left side driver's pod next to my A post here I've got the two batteries so using two of the uh, Optima red tops um, trickiest part here is having positives on opposite sides from and the solenoid I want to mount on the tab that comes on the battery tray on the far side next to the engine so Whereas your 
the EVAP, which usually march mounts right close on the near side next to the fuse box over here, you have to move it over to, if you see the right battery, over next to there, and there's a slot for the uh, battery tray, and you'll see that when it gets mounted in here. But making sure the batteries fit, and however there's a, it comes with a strap that uh, holds the batteries in. I'm going to upgrade that to a tie down, a hard tie down of some sort in the future, but uh, the strap has does work fine, but it's not uh, the most secure thing, I don't think. So you definitely might want something that you want to upgrade, but the strap's what comes with the kit. And here's that strap. Um, and the wires are starting to get laid out here, coming from my module in the cab, coming down from the bottom of the picture here, coming out, trying to figure out where my different wires go. You have a wire that goes to your positive terminal on each side, plus the solenoid for readout and and also a ground so it's kind of it, wires going everywhere <laughs> definitely need to follow the wire diagram if you're not an electrician if you're electrically and mechanically challenged like me definitely doing some intensive reading during this portion to see the layout and cutting wires to length and not wanting to obviously waste wire was a big concern so getting those laid out you can see the move of the evap up there to the top, that black circle on top above the right hand battery, that's uh, where the EVAP moved to and the solenoid is going to go on that black L shaped tab just to the left of it. It'll be the silver piece that moves in here in a second. So still trying to figure out our layout, making sure we get all our positives and negatives in the right spots. Get this, get it tied down, get the solenoid hooked up, so making sure it's all wired right and I have a good enough length on all the wires test it out here moving the solenoid again moving some more wires around uh, starting to get a feel for how much wire length I need at this point and there you can see the amount of the solenoid get the all the positive main battery batteries hooked up and at this point I can go ahead and test the uh, actual connections with the inside control module readout but uh, getting that solenoid mounted making sure my wires links were good and I still got everything loose so I can still trim something if I need to battery read readout comes up okay I'm good to go and then we are getting all our wires tucked away getting some conduit up here in the middle bringing the wire that comes out of the cab into the middle here and distribute it from the middle. There's so many wires going on. It, I don't know if I could have made it neater. I probably could have, but with the five wires that come out of the cab from your module, one of the solenoid, one to each positive, and the ground, it uh, became extensive. So that kind of comes out in the middle and spider webs from there. And then I have the negative coming off the left battery to a ground. But also the I have a winch controller coming in on the right battery, which you can see on the right hand side there, plus extra lights, uh, the um, spotlights coming in on the right battery. So all my right battery supports everything extra that's been installed basically, and uh, the left battery supports all the normal operations of the Jeep that that come stock. I uh, didn't, uh, it would be nice to kind of take some of those things off and put them on an auxiliary battery, but I'm not quite that far to where I'm, I'm ready to do that yet, I don't think, but it would be a good option maybe in the future to run the uh, fog lights off that right battery and probably the radio uh, system off that right battery if I could figure out the wiring setup, but I'm just not there. So that's kind of my setup where I got it set up. Uh, been running it it's been no problems haven't had any real challenges as far as haven't been out to where I've used a lot of the running lights and stuff at night to worry about running it down or nothing but uh, test it out the, with the control module you can switch batteries and have the auxiliary battery which is the right battery in this case charge and link over to the, the main battery 
and that's been no problem. There's a diagram where I can set up a trickle charger, solar trickle charger into the auxiliary battery. They've got diagrams and setups shown an example for things like refrigerators, things like that, which would always be interesting, but I'm not there, but that's, at least I have the option to expand to that in the future if I need it. So this is just my installation of the dual battery tray with battery, tr battery kit. I uh, hope you guys like it.